Hi, this is Shiva Rajaya from VitalCoaching.com. We are talking about vital sex and tantric sex. And the topic for this video is what does my tantric sex life really look like? I want to give you some hints and ideas about what it means to be a tantric or to be engaging into life as a tantric lover when you have a relationship or a partner partnership with somebody and you share sexual energy, what does it feel like or what is it, does it look like? Does it mean that I'm having sex every day with a different partner, engaging in all these um, multiple levels of connection with different lovers? Is it uh, group sex? Is it just uh, sex every now and then? Is it lots of uh, self-pleasure? You know, I want to give you a few hints about how, how it works for me. Um, the first thing is that I'm not in a committed relationship. It means that I, I'm you know, the things that I say is that I'm committed to my spirit, I'm committed to my freedom, and I'm committed to Shakti, to the feminine energy in general, to nurturing and activating that. And very often, because I'm traveling a lot, nomadic lifestyle, I'm leading lots of workshops around the world, then I'm exposed with different opportunities, with different women that come along, uh, along the line in my way. Uh, I'm not sexually attracted to men. It means that I'm not I'm not engaging sexually with men, but there is very often some form of sensuality that is being shared, especially when there are workshops or situations where there is body touch. We might massage each other. There might be some, some uh, sensual touch on, on the body level that, that happens. Um, another important aspect to, uh, to understand about my own love life is that a lot of what I do when it comes to tantric sex is energetic. It means that uh, of all the sexual interactions that I have, only a few are going to be leading to intercourse. And uh, this means that a lot of the interactions where there is an exchange of se sensual or sexual energy don't engage any form of sexual touch or, or even nakedness. Uh, you know, I might be having, um, you know, some form of sensual time with somebody and we are going to uh, sometimes touch each other's body, hug, give each other some soft massage and uh, there is going to be an energetic connection. It means an activation of orgasmic bliss, but without tapping into the primary uh, sexual body, which, which involves the genital zones and uh, the... Um, the lips, the nipples, those kind of places, you know, you might focus more on massaging the, the, the heart area and on touching um, parts of the body that you don't usually access and you, you don't consider them sexual, but they have, they are uh, access points or trigger points to a tremendous amount of energy, energetic, sexual energetic release. And uh, so those are the, the, the tactics or the, the techniques that I focus on a lot. So a lot of energy sex, it is the same when it comes to, um, to for instance, uh, the orgasmic states that I enter into. Those orgasmic states are not like peak orgasms. Uh, there is no ejaculation. You know, I never ejaculate anymore except if I have, uh, you know, an erotic dream. Sometimes I might, might lose a tiny little bit of semen. Or also sometimes in the love making, uh, there might be a moment where I release a tiny little bit of semen because I cross the no return point. And um, so this is a little bit the, the, the context in which it happens. Very often I will have a you know, one uh, lover with who I engage and establish a deeper connection and uh, I naturally tend to become sexually ex exclusive with that person. Um, sometimes when, you know, in the traveling, in the movement, I might have multiple lovers in a period of, you know, one, two, three months. That can happen as well. And when that's, you know, that's, uh, that happens, then uh, safe sex practices are really my top priority. It means that I don't do anything that would put anybody's health or life in danger. You know, you have to be very clear about, about uh, that as well. So we will talk a little bit more about safety, you know, in, a, in another video. But for now, know that it's something that stays in my mind also very, very clearly and consciously. Um, Another aspect of my love life, my tantric sex life, is that I usually create a space which is extremely sacred. It means that I always use incense, oils, candles. I always uh, have mantras around me. I very often have crystals. I, and I will, in the way I'm engaging with, uh, with a lover, with a tantric sex lover, uh, is always from a place of reverence. It means that I look at this person and I, I recognize the Shakti vibration, the energy, the divine bliss that is streaming 
through uh, my lover's body and energy and I relate to that. I position myself as Shiva and I engage from a place of, of really bringing the divine energy in the core of our exchange. And this is an intention that you learn how to cultivate and you practice on the long term. I've been engaged in uh, tantric sex for like 25 years so it's something that has been in my field for a long time and in you know with practice you develop a certain way of approaching sex sexual energy and sexual exchange from a place of really giving it a, a secret uh, secret I mean um, a secret dimension um, I very often have um, extended periods of time where I don't necessarily have a lover uh, this might go for, for a few months, for instance, when I'm traveling, if I'm in the Indian Himalayas and I'm there by myself, of course, I'm going to take, uh, take in a little bit of uh, hermit kind of lifestyle and, and mode. It doesn't mean that there is no sexual energy, it means that there is still sexual stimulation and sometimes I will engage into self-pleasure practices, very conscious self-pleasure practices, because there is a, a sexual need or an emotional need kicking in. Um, Another thing that is important about my sex life is that I have been in long-term relationships uh, for a big part of, uh, of my life. Uh, those relationships were committed and for about uh, the last, um, they lasted, you know, three, five, um, another three years. So those committed relationships gave me a certain mind frame or certain way to, to work within committed uh, situations and I could totally you know go back into that if the opportunity was was showing up and and uh, I would find discover a lover with who we have a total energetic resonance and synchronicity in terms of location as well and uh, intentions in life it's possible I'm not shutting down the doors to that but right now I am in what I call free flow I don't even use the word polyamory or monoamory or duoamory <laughs> You know, for myself, what I call it is I'm, I'm free flow. It means that uh, my sexual energy belongs to me. I'm the one who decides when and where I'm engaging. And I don't, he I don't give the permission or the power to anybody else to tell me what to do. But, you know, something that is very clear as well, it is that when I, I meet a new potential lover and there is some form of energetic exchange happening, I will tend to be extremely clear in how I position myself. You know, recently I met this woman and we had a great connection, great resonance. She tells me that she's looking for a long-term partner to have babies. And uh, I just said, well, it looks like we are not going to be a good match because for me, I'm in free flow. I don't want to hurt your feelings and to have to take distance from you when the moment I start to, to travel. So very often there is, a, there is a resonance in terms of energy because we are uh, in, in free flow and in, in a state of uh, freedom in terms of uh, engaging with other pot potential partners but sometimes that uh, resonance is, is not there and uh, the agendas don't match and uh, if you try to you know to lie or to manipulate the situation to bring somebody into uh, being open when in fact they want committed relationship then it's going to create hurt and, and triggers so it's important to be very clear and very honest and using a, a lot of integrity in the way you approach uh, potential lovers in, in your life. Um, I want to uh, make it clear again that a lot of the, the sexual or sensual interaction that I'm having with, uh, with lovers don't actually involve uh, sexual type of actions, you know. We might be having a, a swim in a river somewhere and there's going to be a sensual exchange. There is going to be nakedness and, and touch on the body, but sometimes not even kissing, no, no genital touch. There isn't going to be anything that, that consciously activates the sexual energy, but there is going to be, for instance, conscious breathing practices, making eye contact and hugging and, and taking care of each other. And those uh, exchanges are extremely nurturing and bringing in lots of, uh, you know, sexual release and, and, uh, and energy. And uh, I remember a couple of years back when I checked on the relationships and the connections that I had with women in terms of sexual energy, I would say that uh, out of uh, 10 interactions, nine of them had been purely energetic. We might have slept together in the same bed, but no penetration, no intercourse. It was purely an energetic exchange where there is lots of juice, there is orgasmic energy being built up. We might be naked, but very often it's not engaging into the into the into what you would call a sexual practice. So it's good to understand these things. And uh, I'm not, you know, I'm 
open either way, it means that sometimes the synchronicity and the juice is right to engage on a sexual level, but sometimes we get a kind of feeling that it's better to stay uh, purely energetic, and that is going to trigger a whole new chain reaction of, um, of emotion, sensual, sensuality and connection that you don't necessarily access when you are heading towards uh, traditional sex with, with intercourse. And, uh, you know, of course, I'm, I'm open either way. I'm having a great time when I'm actually engaging traditionally with uh, the traditional forms of sex, with penetration, kissing, and, and so on. Uh, but the, 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 the channels of energetic uh, exchange are extremely powerful as well. I hope that makes sense to you. I'll see you soon again. Bye-bye.